Now for the last part of this question, we've got to solve x is greater than or equal to zero radians, but less than two pi radians. This equation, two sine squared x plus two equals seven cos x. So to do something like this, what we've got to do is make sure that we have this in the same trig function. In other words, can we get this all in sines or cosines or some other trig function? Well, we need an identity to do that. And the identity that you should be familiar with is this one, that sine squared of any angle, let's call it x in this case, plus cos squared of any angle is identical to one. And we can pick up on this because if we make sine squared x the subject, then we get sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. And we can then substitute in place of sine squared x here, 1 minus cos squared x. And that's going to give us a quadratic equation in cosine x or cos x. So we've got 2 multiplied by 1 minus cos squared x, then plus that 2 equals 7 cos x. Now what we need to do is expand this bracket and if we do that we get 2 times the 1 is 2 and then 2 times the minus cos squared x is minus 2 cos squared x. Then we add the 2 and we get that it equals 7 cos x. And like all quadratic equations it would be good to have this term here as a positive value. So I'm going to add 2 cos squared x to both sides. So if we do that, we're going to have 2 cos squared x. And then we'll follow it with the plus 7 cos x. Now, on this left-hand side, we've got 2 plus 2, which is 4. But if we subtract 4 from both sides, we end up with minus 4 equals 0. So hopefully you're happy with that rearrangement of that equation there. So we've got this in the right format. and it should factorize a couple of brackets, okay, equals zero. It's going to be two cos x and a cos x, so that we get that two cos x times cos x gives us the two cos squared x. And then we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give this minus four. That when we group together our values here, we get seven cos x. Looking at this, I'm going to put a 4 there. I can see that's going to give me 8 cos x if I have a plus there. And this will have to be a minus 1 to give me minus cos x. So we've got 8 cos x minus cos x is the 7 cos x. And now that we've factorized it, each one of these factors could be equal to 0. So therefore, 2 cos x minus 1 as one factor could equal zero, or the other factor, cos x plus four, that could equal zero. This one's very easy to spot the solution of. We could take minus, we could take four, I should say, from both sides, and that will give us cos x equals minus four. And knowing that cosine of x goes between minus one and one, then there's going to be no solution for this equation here. If you were to try on your calculator, x equals the inverse cos of minus 4, you'll get most probably a maths error. So therefore, what we have here is no solution on this one. But if we look at 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0, if we were to add 1 to both sides, we get 2 cos x equals 1. And then if we were to divide both sides by 2, you end up with the cosine of x, cos x equaling a half. Now we can solve this, and to do that, I'm just going to come down on this side. Let's just box that off, okay, so that you remember, hopefully, that identity. But uh, if we carry on, then, with what we have here, let's just put a line down there. Cos x equals a half. If we were to inverse cos both sides here, we get that x equals the inverse cosine of one half. Now, this ought to be a familiar solution okay, to you without using a calculator. 
It is the equivalent in degrees of 60 degrees or in radians it is pi upon 3 radians. And we've got to give our solution anyway in radians so it's pi upon 3. But if you're unsure of this all you've got to do is just make sure your calculator is in radians mode and do the inverse cos of a half. Also I'd want to use a quadrant diagram to get all my solutions in the range from 0 to 2 pi. This is 0 radians, this would be the equivalent of 90 degrees which is pi upon 2 radians, pi radians for 180 degrees, 270 is 3 pi upon 2 and back home for 2 pi radians, the equivalent of 360 degrees. Cosine is positive though, we've got cos of x equals a positive value, a half. So where is cosine positive? Well it's in the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive and cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant down here. So mark two lines in the usual way equally inclined to this horizontal line. We want x, x can be from here to this first line here x or you can start from here and another value for x is to go all the way around so you get to this line again here that's another value for x. So when we do the inverse cos of a half as I said earlier it's a well-known one you should find that you get pi upon 3, pi upon 3 radians okay I can mark a little c there for radians that means that this angle in here is pi upon 3, it also means this one here is pi upon 3 in magnitude, okay? So we want this angle all the way around here. So it's 2 pi radians minus pi upon 3. 2 pi is the same as 6 pi over 3, so if you take away a third pi you end up with 5 pi upon 3, 5 pi upon 3 radians. There's the exact values for our, our answers, but you might want to give the decimal equivalent. The disadvantage with that though is that you're going to need to approximate them. If you did pi divided by 3, you should find you get 1.04719 and so on. Okay, radians. If you do 5 pi divided by 3, you should find you also get, let's just put a comma there and we'll put it underneath here, 5.23598 and so on radians. And you could round those say to one decimal place. I'll leave it up to you, okay, to decide. I certainly wouldn't go too far with that. Um, but if I did do that, x would equal 1.0 radians, let's go to two decimal places, let's go 1.05, okay, radians for that one and for this one that will be 5.24, 5.24 radians and let's just mark in that they're to 2 dp, two decimal places, okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how to go about this question if it was causing you some problems, okay.